Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Man, I got a crazy story for y'all today. I'm just sitting here thinking back on dudes I know that are incarcerated. Dudes that went on to do really bad things. Some of these guys I cut off many years ago. And this one particular story came to mind. It took place when I was 17. And it wouldn't fully resolve itself until I was 32. You never know who you got around you. You never know what that dude sitting right there beside you might be, be you know, really capable of. Watch the company you keep. Watch the way people move. I guess it's fair to say not a lot shocks me these days. Like, legitly, if aliens were to land on top of the White House and start twerking, I wouldn't be too surprised. I've seen some crazy things, man. I ain't never seen no aliens twerk, but I've seen some, some dudes that had heads shaped like aliens twerk. But it goes without saying. Some messed up people in this world that do some messed up things. And you don't really know who they are until they reveal themselves. You know what they say? A snake only sheds its skin to become a bigger snake. Humans are like that too. Only difference is you don't know they're snakes until they either bite you or somebody around you. You know I'd have seen it. You know I'd have lived it. So let's relive it. So when I was young, we first moved here to Virginia. We lived in this trailer park. And I ain't got no shame in my game. That's what it is. And for people that don't know about the trailer park, the trailer park is just, it's another version of the projects. It's just poor white people, poor people of all different races that can't afford an apartment, can't afford a house. And that's not always the occasion or the, you know, the circumstance. That was our circumstances. That's what we could afford. That's what my mom and dad could afford at the time. So we was living off Jeff Davis is what it used to be called. Now it's Richland Highway. This place called Shady Hill. Now, it was like a golden rule living out there that when somebody knew new kids moved in the neighborhood, we had to test them. If you was a new dude and you moved in the neighborhood, we was going to put hands on you. Tire went down, man. Real talk. They did it to me. I had to fight. And any other kids that moved in the neighborhood, teenagers, whatever, we was going to beat you up. We were out there one day just being dirty little trailer park kids. Teenagers or whatever It was a very diverse community A lot of Mexicans A lot of Asians A lot of whites You know Mixed in black families here and there We see this girl walking down the street Cute girl So we, You know She's new out here Shit Ain't nobody hollering at her yet We take off in that direction We hollering at her Talking to the girl I'm maybe 13, 14 years old Come to find out they just moved in out there. She's got two brothers. So on the strength of her and that several of us other little boys like this girl, right? We didn't beat her brothers up. We didn't make them run the fade when they moved in the neighborhood. Because we didn't want the sister to hate us, right? We was trying to holler at the sister. So we're not about to we're not about to beat these dudes up. Cause then she was like, Y'all beat my brothers up. Y'all know that. We didn't want all that, right? And they had a younger brother too. It's actually three brothers. I'll get into this. I get cool with these dudes. And skip school, smoke weed, drink beer all day, every day, you know, Mad Dog 2020s, the King Cobras, the Camos, we was drinking there, OD, whatever we could slide inside our jacket when they weren't looking, that's what we're drinking for the day. The one brother, I'm going to go ahead and introduce their names, Troy and Harley McMahon. The middle brother, Harley, drank. That dude drank his ass off. He could drink like a fish. At 16 years old, he was a full-fledged alcoholic. They stopped skipping school. The mom was a baser, pipehead. Smoked that crack. The stepdad, this dude named Curtis, smoked that crack. They eventually get kicked out the trailer park. How you get kicked out the trailer park where the rent is $80 a week? 
One reason or another, boom, they get kicked out. We move. We move down in South Side off Walmsley. I'm walking through the neighborhood one day and I run into him. Like, what y'all doing? Like, man, we live right up the street in this house up here. A couple years have, have passed now, right? I said, all right. What, what, what y'all about to get into? They like, everybody kicks it out of our house, you come to our house. Like I said, their, their parents were was, was smokers, man. They were crackheads. They didn't care who came in. There'd be everybody in there, from the from crack dealers to teenagers to people they were smoking crack with. So now it's about a year. We fast forward. I've been kicking it at this house every single day. Everybody goes there. Their parents don't give a shit if the whole block stays in the back bedroom smoking blunts, bagging up, drinking, right? Well, in doing that, I met a lot of different people I didn't know from that area. I had a little girlfriend out there at the time. You know, I, I, wasn't, I just turned 17. And she had a good friend named Kat. Now, Kat was, uh, I'd say Kat was, Kat was like 15. If she wasn't 15, she might have been 14. But she was like, I think she was like 15. And the girl I was dating at the time, I was 17. She was 16. And her friend was either 15 or 14. We all kick it there, man. This one night in particular, we're in there. We're smoking weed, taking bong hits. We are drunk, like drunk, drunk. And my homeboy Frog I had on a couple weeks back, not the Frog from Florida, this is Frog from VA, is there with me that night. And it gets to be late and I'm looking around and there's people sleep on the floor. There's people everywhere. And I'm like, shit, I'm going home. I ain't, I ain't about to stay in this dirty ass trap house. We go home. Next morning, Frog sleep, and I'm in my bed in the bedroom. Frog done throwing some blankets down in the floor. He sleep, got a pillow on the floor, right? I hear a knock at the window. I hear it again. Wakes me up early. I'm talking 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Somebody's knocking at my window on a weekend. So I wake up, open the blinds, look out the blinds, and the girl cat and the girl that I'm dating at the time are standing outside my window, and the girl cat is... You can see she's crying. At first, I didn't I didn't see it. I just woke up. I'm like, what's going on? What's up? And the girl's like, come outside. And I'm like, well, what's, man, what time is it? What's going on? And then I start seeing she's crying. And I'm like, oh, you all right? I live my whenever you all right? She's like, come outside. So I said, all right. I get outside. I go ahead and wake Frog up. I said, hey, something's going on. I said, get up, man. He gets up, throws his shoes and stuff on him. And I go outside and I've got these, the wheat Tims on. I got a pair of basketball shorts on and a white beat. I just slid the Tims on real fast, right? Grab the fitted. I've always been into the fitted. Throw the fitted on. I come out the door and I'm like, what's going on? The girl cat tells me, Troy raped me last night. I said, what? Troy raped me? I said, what Troy? My homeboy Troy? Throw on some jeans. Empty my pockets out. Make sure I ain't got nothing in my pockets. Don't put nothing in my pockets. Throw my Tim's back on. Throw a t-shirt on. Grab my hat. I said, all right, come on, let's go. By now, Frog knows what's going on. This is going to get deep. There's a whole lot to this story, man. This is a roller coaster. So we go up to the house. Now it's like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning when we get to this house. And we used to just walk up and knock on the side window and be like, hey, open the back door. And they come unlock the back door. You know, ain't no crackhead is going to sleep with the door open, right? So I walk up to the window and I knock on the window real loud. And I've already made it in my I've already made it. My mind's made up that this man, this dude, is, he's 19. This girl's 15. And he forced himself on her and raped her. I've made it up in my mind. There is no, we're going to discuss what's going on. She's crying, like sobbing and shaking from what this fucking dude did to her, right? Bang on the window. Nobody answers. A whole bunch of people in the room sleep, right? Bang on the window. Nobody answers. Take my fist and I hit the glass a couple times to the point. Surprised I didn't break this old ass window pane, right? All of a sudden the blinds crack open. I see an eyeball. I see her open the back door. Blinds, they pull the string. Blinds go up a little bit. And it's Troy. Dude that raped my friend, right? I saw, open the window, open the back door. What's up? He's like, like he's still asleep and shit. I'm like, hey, open the window, man. So he lifts the window up a little bit. Now I take my hands and I push the window up. 
And I was like, yo, open the back door. He's like, what's going on? What's going on? She's standing behind me crying. My homeboy Frog standing there. The other girl standing there. I said, just open the back door. He's like, why? Wow, what's going on? Fuck all the talking. He knows He knows what's going down. He's in the middle of like trying to ask me, hey, what, what, why is she crying? What's going on? I reach in the window, grab him, snatch him out the window. When I snatch him, he comes through the blinds. The blinds break down. The blinds come out with him, throw him on the ground, and I hit him. Boom! Mind you now, I'm young, I'm not boasting, but he 100% got what he had coming, right? I hit him, and it had rained the night before, so we got like these potholes in the streets. He falls over this pothole with his gravel, and he's going to get up, and I'm looking around for something to hit him with, and the blinds that came out the window, they're laying there, I ball him up, grab him up, smack him in the side of his face, and the blinds explode. Boom! Pieces and sections of blinds go everywhere. By now, my homeboy falls, I ran up and kicked him in his face. And he, you know, fell back over this puddle. And he's rah, 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 getting all hyped, trying to get up real quick, right? And there used to be this fence behind their house. Fence had been knocked down a long time. But some of them, the metal poles, the whole chain link fence up, were still there. And a lot of them were laying on the ground wherever, whoever took the fence out, never cleaned up their mess, right? He goes to get up. I pick this piece of fence up, this round pipe, about this big around, and run up and ping him on top of his head. Bong! I said, you want to break people? Wanna rape my fucking homegirl, you sick bitch? Bong, bong, just start hitting him with it. Beating him on his back, beating him in his head. Now he's unresponsive. I done ran over there, picked up the trash can, dumped the trash can, hit him with the trash can. Now we just go to booting him and punching him, right? He raped a 15 year old. There's the charge. There's the assailant, Mr. Troy McMahon. Now there's blood everywhere. I got blood all over my jeans. My Tims are covered in blood. There's blood all up and down my arms. There's blood on my face where this shit's unsplatted back on me. We trashed this dude. Like, I did my best with that pipe to just hurt him as bad as I could. You know, people say it's, oh, I couldn't hit somebody like that. You could. If somebody had raped a good friend of yours, violated somebody like that, and you had to see the pain that they were dealing with, and know that the person lives right down the street and have the opportunity to do it, you would do it. Just most people get caught by the cops and you don't get the option to do it. We got the option. We handled it. I didn't call no cops. I didn't do none of that. We went there and just beat the shit out this dude. Smashed him. I took this pole and just beat him and beat him and beat him. Hitting him all on his head. He's trying to cover with his arms. I'm, I'm trying to break all that shit. And to the point he's now out, right? Hit him in his head a bunch more. Kick his face. Face bounces off the concrete. He's just laying there now, right? Lady next door yells out, I'm calling the cops. Early in the morning. You know that nosy ass, that, that nosy -ass lady that sits in her, her window in the kitchen, looking out at everything that goes by, sipping her coffee, looking for anything? She's seen everything happen. Other people in the house, the window's wide open. All this noise is going on. Some of them are still drunk and ain't got up. Harley's done got up. I seen him come to the window. I ran up on the window and Harley backed up from the window. So I told him, let's go. Let's roll out. We're walking down Walmsley, headed back towards my house. Actually, we were headed to the neighborhood I kicked it in next to my house, back to Amp Hill, right? It's early, early in the morning, like I told y'all. We don't make it far. We're walking maybe five minutes. Cops roll up on us. Boom. Block us in. Just cut us off. They got out the car, freeze, don't move, don't move, don't move. Put our hands up, look at my homeboy, looks at me. I had my arm around Cat, and I was like rubbing the side of her shoulder, like she's crying hysterical. You know what I mean? My little girlfriend at the time was walking beside me, and I'm like, are you all right? I'm rubbing her back. I'm like, you good, you good, you all right? And she's just crying. She's not saying thank you. She's not saying anything. She's just crying because this dude raped her in the middle of the night. I'm like, it's all right, it's all right. But at the time, freeze, don't move. So I... She steps off the side. I put my hands up. Like I said, there's blood on me. Covered in blood. They come over. They handcuff me. They handcuff my homeboy, Frog. Take us and lean us up against the car. You want to tell us what's going on? And I look at him and he looks at me and I don't say nothing. I'm young and I already know by now. You don't talk to the cops. You don't tell them nothing. So I don't say nothing. I stand there handcuffs a couple minutes. And they're on the radio saying something back and forth with whoever, whatever, sergeant or whatever's on the phone. And the girl cat walks up to the cop, bawling her tears out. And she was like, the guy raped me. And the cop was like, excuse me? 
And she was like, the guy they beat up, he raped me last night. And the cops looked at each other, looked at her, opened the back door of the cop car and asked her, they said, honey, can you, sweetheart, would you, whatever they called her, will you please sit down in the car? She sat down in the car. They asked us what happened. I mean, she told you. They unhandcuffed us and we walked off. That was a time I can say that I ran into some good cops. Soon as they realized that the guy we had just beat up had raped this young girl, they removed the cuffs from us. I don't know if they were fathers. They were definitely cops, Richmond City cops. They took the handcuffs off of us. Didn't ask us our names. Didn't ask for IDs. Didn't say anything. They didn't say, did a good job. Hey, you shouldn't have done that. They uncuffed us and told her, you know, she got in the car and they drove off. I never saw a cat after she drove off in that cop car. She never came back around. She never came back around the little girl I was dating's house again. When I say little girl, my girlfriend was like 16. I was like 17. It was the last I ever saw of her. Cops didn't do anything to us. That night, we're at my homeboy's house around the corner. The cops that morning, they arrested the guy, Troy. Picked him up off the street where we left him in a pool of blood and this muddy pothole. Picked him up. Took him to the hospital. Got him all stitched up. Got him fixed where he was broken. And then took him to jail. That night, we're standing in front of my homeboy, B.B. and David's house. And here comes Harley. Harley's is the other brother I was telling you about. And there's a younger brother. He went on to do good for himself in life, so I'm going to leave his name out of this. Harley comes walking up. By now, he didn't got some drinks in him, right? He got that liquid courage. He's going to come uh, revenge what happened to his brother, right? So I'm standing out there, and I see somebody walking down the street. And we ain't got no street lights out there. Most of the shit's been shot out either by guns, BB guns, slingshots, whatever we had to do to make the lights not shine at night. We used to knock them out, right? I see a silhouette walking down the street. And it's like four or five, me and my homeboy standing there on, the, on this corner. And this dude comes walking up and he's like, man, why y'all do that to Troy, man? They took Troy to jail. Why y'all do that to him? And before he could finish saying anything, I punch Harley in the side of his face as hard as I could. Boom! Like, don't come over here trying to defend that piece of shit that raped my friend, right? Troy Harley takes that shit in the face, stumbles sideways, takes off. I don't see him no more for a while. Troy would go on to be convicted. Got a year. One year for the carnal knowledge charge. One year for the rape of that girl that night. That's what he got. I'm down at the river many years later. I'm out there at Bell's Isle. My Richmond cats know where Bell's Isle Pony Pasture is. I'm out there with some friends. We're just walking down where the river is, crossing these rocks. And I see all these guys drinking. And I look over in the crowd, and there stands Harley. And we make eye contact, and he's chugging a beer. This dude could drink. He took one look at me and looked away. That would be the last time I ever seen Harley on the streets. Troy, when I got locked up on this bid here, the one that I did the 10 years for, was so spun out of his mind, and I guess the drugs had messed him up so much over time, we're in the jail, and I'm going to get my medication. He's standing behind me, and he's like, Hey, yo, you got some sweet tattoos. Some corny shit some weirdo would say. And I turn around and I'm face to face with Troy McMahon. He doesn't even, I done aged. You know what I mean? I got all this facial hair now. I got a bunch of different tattoos. And he's like, where you from? I said, don't fucking speak to me. Huh? I don't know if he knew who I was and just didn't want to act like he knew. Or he thought things were cool. He really didn't know who I was. But as he was trying to talk to me, I said, don't fucking speak to me. And he was like. Alright, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? What's up with this dude? So maybe he didn't realize who I was. A couple days later, Troy gets taken out the pod. I don't know if he figured out who I was and told him, oh man, y'all gotta move me. This dude almost killed me once. Or what happened? But he disappeared. Let's go ahead and fast forward now. Because this shit gets deep. 2008, I'm in prison. Watching the local news. Where I was at, they showed the Richmond news. Harley's face pops up on the news. Harley was down at the river where they were known to hang out. And attacked this homeless dude that everybody knows down there named Pony. Pony's just an old homeless man that 
always asking people for money. He's a wine. No, he'll drink anything he can get. But he's completely harmless. Harley done got all messed up. Let me show y'all this. There's, there's, the, there's the paper. That's the article on, on what happened that night. Harley attacks this man down there. Makes the news, right? Didn't shock me. I didn't hear anything else about it. I get transferred. 2012. Here I am, sitting at this dumbass Indian Creek place. Dorm living. I'm out in Chesapeake. For y'all that don't know, that's Virginia Beach area. That's almost two hours away from where I live in Richmond. So we don't get the local news. I don't get to see my news. The newspaper that gets spread around is a Chesapeake, Virginia Beach newspaper, 757 area. It's not the 804 newspaper. So every day, every chance I got, I would go down to the library in the prison because the prison got newspapers from all over. And I'd be like, hey, can I, can I check out the uh, Richmond newspaper? And I would go through the newspapers, like a week's worth, just reading, seeing what was going on in my city, right? When I come across this article of a man found dead off Belt Boulevard, Behind a tire shop. An area I know very well. <clears throat> Didn't put a lot of thought into it, right? I'm like, damn, they out there killing. Like, that's never going to stop. Well, when I read this newspaper, this was like, this newspaper was like maybe a week and a half old. I keep reading through them. And I come across the article of the two people that were arrested. Harley McMahon, age 32. And his brother, Troy McMahon, age 34, both arrested for the murder of a 50-year-old man. Y'all see the clipping. Something transpired behind this tire shop that led them to stab this man all in his head, stab him all in his neck, stab him all in his body. They said Harley stabbed him once, Troy stabbed him 12 times. But as this was going on, Harley was bashing him in his head with a big rock, bashing his brains out. Harley would go on to be found guilty and given 13 years. And the clip that I read later on, it says that he testified against his brother Troy, but I've searched the internet and I can't find that clipping nowhere. Harley, as you see, comes home 2023. Troy, as you see, comes home 2031. That ass whooping he got, he deserved. Them bones I broke with that, with that metal pole, he deserved. He deserved to die in that mud puddle that day. Luckily, that didn't happen because you can't take the law into your own hands and kill people. But those two cops played it real cool and allowed what happened to go undocumented. They probably told the chief when they got back, man, we found the young girl walking, but we never found the assailants. Because they knew in their hearts what we had done was the right thing to do. If either one of them ever come across this video, I have no pity for you. Troy McMahon, you are a piece of shit. A whole entire piece of shit. You raped my friend. And yeah, I tried to beat your ass to death, didn't I? And you will see this when you get out. Somebody would tell you over the phone. Jay made a video about you. Ain't no clout involved in this. Because there ain't no clout to be gained off your stupid ass. Harley, you let your drinking. And the article I read when I was in prison stated that they were back there drinking with this man. And the Harley wanted to get some more drinks. So they attempted to rob him. Dude started squabbling with their ass. Dude put them fists up. Started fighting back. So they stabbed him to death. Beat him to death with a rock. Hit him beside a dumpster and rolled out. It kind of amazes me sometimes when I look back on how many people I know. That went on to kill somebody. Or that are incarcerated for long amounts of time. I never took Troy as a type of person that could forcefully, not only was she a minor, which is fucked up, but they could forcefully do something like that. 
I want everybody to take a second during your day if you got a group of people you kick it with and look at the caliber of people that you have around you. Look at the type of people you surround yourself with. Here it was, I'd known this dude for many years. And I can't say that I didn't know he was trouble because I knew he was trouble. All we got into was trouble. Watch the company you keep. I'm proud to be able to say that I did at least get to serve justice to him. Because justice wasn't served on that one year sentence he got for that carnal knowledge charge. It wasn't. It was not served. I wanted to share that with y'all, man. It was 1997 when it happened. I was 17 years old. Like I told you, I never seen Cat again. But if you see this, Cat, what up, though? And salute to you. And I'm sure you will see this. Because, you know, Richmond's got nothing but love for me. I don't expect you to jump in the comments section. And, but if you do, hey, it's all love. And I was happy to do what I did that day. I had it to let me to go into jail, to the detention center. I done went with my head held high. Because I got the chance and the opportunity to do something that most people don't get a chance to do. Hope y'all enjoyed today's story. It's a crazy story, but that's what it is. Anyway, these jails, institutions, detention centers... Y'all already know they're just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching. Y'all know how we do it. Salute.